Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of At Home with the Willises. I'm Nikki Willis, and... I'm Jameen Willis at home. And as you can see, we got a guest in the house. We have Coach Amber J with us. Oh, thank you. Uh, and today's topic is how to overcome business burnout. Ooh, this is going to be a good one. Stay tuned. You're at home with the Willises. So before we get started, I want to remind you to make sure you subscribe right here. Hit that button right here below. And also make sure you hit the bell so that you are notified every time we upload new content. We're over a thousand subscribers and growing. So this is really exciting. Y'all rocking with us. That's what I'm loving. Okay. I am loving the fact that y'all rocking with us. Uh, but speaking of rocking with us, Coach Jay is rocking with us today. Yeah. Hi, Coach Jay. Thank you for having me. The energy is amazing. Well, you know, we like it. We like it. You know what? Coach Amber Jay. Yes. Because it's not just Jay. It's Coach Amber Jay. Mm -hmm. I so I got to make sure. To That's it. right. You got to put some respect <laughs> on the name. All right. Uh, but yeah, babe, you want to take it away. Yes. All right. So today we want to tackle the world of business burnout. As entrepreneurs, we wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. uh, we get stressed out sometimes. Um, and we try to conquer the world, and being a boss sometimes can be uh, stressful, and sometimes we lose ourselves and experience burnout. Right. So today, we want to bring in a coach that can give us some tips and talk about how can we overcome business burnout and how to prevent being burnt out in the first place. So mm -hmm. um, Coach Amber J is a life coach, a wardrobe expert, author, speaker, mm -hmm. and last but not least, an entrepreneur helping women dominate in the in the world of business. Yeah. So, Coach Yay. Amber, thanks for being here today. Now, I read your bio. I stalked your Instagram. I went <laughs> on your website. I didn't read the book yet, Okay. but it sounds to me like you're the Olivia Pope of of that's women that's business it. owners. Would you say that's a pretty good hey, I'll take that. Absolutely. Oh, yes. I like, I like that. Yeah. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Um so notice first of the all, white jacket. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <exactly>. right, <laughs> right here in the white jacket. <laughs> right. The blazer. The blazer. Okay. Yes. Olivia Pope always had like a, a bad jacket, right? Yes. Coat, so, so. You, so you 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 help fix women entrepreneurs, women CEO, women business owners, correct? I wouldn't say fix. Um, that's a huge word. But I do help them identify how to fix themselves. Mm. Okay. I just give them the keys to, and they got to utilize them. Keys. I like the humbleness. I like keys, the honey. And listen, let me tell you, these, <coughs> these key earrings are also giving as well. It's just, <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, um, so, Coach Amber, what made you get into coaching? So um, I actually went on a discovery of finding myself. There was a moment that I was married, had my kids, and I'm like, okay, is this all to life? Mm. Um, and I found myself burnt out. I found myself stuck. And one day I was like, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I went mm. on a discovery of really just finding who am I without a title, without, you know, being on a day-to-day -day grind. And that led me into coaching. I actually found a coach. And I'm like, I've done this my whole life. Is wow. this my purpose? Is this what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. But going through some of the trials and things that I went through, I went through a divorce mm. and that lot, that made me like kind of lose myself. So I wanted mm. to rediscover who I am and that helped me find my purpose. And so a lot of the keys that I share with other women are how to balance their life, how to live in purpose, how to be mm. themselves with all of those without the titles and show up as that's a title, but that's not who I am. Mm. Um, and so it just, that's kind of how I got into coaching. Um, then I relocated here to Las Vegas and, um, I was like, this is what I'm called to do. Yeah. Like, this is what I'm called to do. So I started my entrepreneurship journey and that took me on a whole nother <laughs> level. But, yeah. So, um, you mentioned, uh, you know, you mentioned burnout and, um, feeling stuck, if you will, uh, what was going on at the time or, or what was that feeling? Because some people might um, not know how to identify. So for me, it was like 
um, the robotic feeling, right? Like I okay. wake up in the morning, I getting the kids ready, going to a job, um, no purpose, no passion, no real motivation. It just felt real robotic. Mm. And I just felt like this can't be how the rest of my life is going to be, right? Because yeah. especially as women, they tell us like, get married, have kids, yeah. do this, do that, and you should be happy. And I was miserable, right? Yeah. I did those things and I just didn't find purpose within that mm -hmm. not that I don't love being a mother and I loved at the time being a wife but it just didn't feel like purposeful for me yeah. completely it felt like there was more that I wasn't experiencing um and so it was just like that robotic feeling like okay I'm just doing this again and then I didn't want to get up and get dressed every day or I mm -hmm. didn't feel like pretty anymore or those little things that we kind of take for granted or I don't have time to get my nails done or I don't have time to do this and so I started putting myself on the back burner mm -hmm. and those were the things that made mm -hmm. me realize huh something is not right you know yeah um making good money doing the but there's still something missing right because we, we reach a level of success and we're like we think like oh I made the six figures and yep. I have the house I have the car I have this but yeah. then you still feel empty so that's kind of that feeling that I, I was feeling. Because there was so nothing right. that I can pinpoint that was actually wrong. Yeah. It just was within myself. Yeah. Just, something just wasn't right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a really good point when you said, when you talked about reaching different points of success. Yeah. Um, you don't, it doesn't necessarily have to feel, have to be a feeling of, well, you know, I'm on my last or I'm, you know, or I'm broke or, or anything like that. You were essentially at the at the height it sounds like yes. of your career you know you were like you said you were you were married to what society uh, tells us to to think where we should be married with children and you know dream job and all that and you still were like something's missing so it doesn't even have to be where you're not at points of success you can be in points of success or having successful moments and still feel stuck still feel stuck yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think for me, and one of the things that I do as a coach is really help other women unlock that purpose within us, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is it that you're called to do? Because we all have our own expert of genius, right? Yeah. What is it? Are you living in that, right? Because that's yeah. a passion and a purpose and a feeling that can't be described until you reach that. And we all know what that is for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us are like, I'm just showing up, right? Because we learn how to mask ourselves. We know how to put on the, the the faces. But are we living in that when I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm just grateful. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, my God, I'm here. Right? Yeah. Um, within ourselves. And a lot of the coaching that I do is really making us face ourselves. Who is the woman in the mirror? Can you look in your own eyes? Do Ooh. you love what you see? Right? Um, and a lot of times when I ask successful women, like, who are you without a title? They're like, huh? Right. Well, I'm a mom. No, who are you without being that title, right? Like, yes. and a lot of women that I've seen, they can't answer that. Mm -hmm. And so that's really like, there's something we need to dig a little deeper. We need to really go within and ask ourselves, like, what was my dream at five? What did I really want to do before people or families and beliefs told mm -hmm. me something different? Ooh, people, family, beliefs. It's so interesting how, you know, as life goes on, um, your environment yeah. What you watch, what you consume, um, the the friends that you have around yeah. you start to begin to shape what you believe. And eventually certain things get lost. Certain yeah. things, like you said, what what did I want to be at five? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I wanted I, to be a judge when I was five. Did that <laughs> have anything to do with like what? what doing? You wanted to be a judge? That was one of the things that I thought about. Really? Being a judge. Interesting. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. I think I like fell asleep watching like night court. <laughs> probably. <laughs> if I <laughs> Or you probably are always someone that's in those leadership roles where you have to make decisions and you know. See, that's why she gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> oh, you see it? You see it? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. come on, Coach. Coach Amber. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I gotta live. To yeah, I, I gotta get, live with this now. Come help. on now. I get help because sometimes <laughs> I get attacked on this here podcast. <laughs> But, you know, it's three oh, women against one today. But sometimes, you know, I get a little help because sometimes you have a, I have a little bit of hating going on. Oh, stop. So <laughs> you talked about, like, losing yourself yeah. um, with your role of being, like,
like a mother or a wife or, you know, in your role, whatever, whether you're a CEO, wherever right. you have in your job. So in the earlier podcast, we talked about uh, code switching, code switching yeah. and uh, is it necessary? Is it not necessary in uh, being your authentic self? So when you, you know, you think about who you were, who you wanted to be when you were a kid, when you were in high school, the dreams that you had, sometimes it can get lost and you can like lose yourself. Yeah. And so what I focused on is being in a position to where you can be your authentic self. So when you coach women, um, do you talk about code switching? Do you advise your clients to be their authentic self? Because we all have to still function. We still have to make money right. while we're in business. So, <laughs> How do you um, advise your clients, like as far as like code switching or being your authentic self, or how to have that balance? Well, I think well, one of the things for myself is when you live in your authenticity, you don't really necessarily. I wouldn't say code switch. You just know how to navigate, right? So mm -hmm. I know that when I'm with my circle of friends, I could be a little more loose, right? If I'm going into a a business establishment, then I may, may, may be a little bit more reserved, but I'm still going to be me, right? I'm going to stand on my principles. I'm going to stand on my morals, my my integrity of who I am, mm -hmm. right? And then I don't connect to things that don't align to that. So I don't really have to switch who I am because I'm always aligning to what it is I authentically desire and want. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's, again, like putting on those masks is if we can learn to remove the mask and be who we are authentically and then know how to navigate each space where you are right but still not losing yourself and I think um, when we do code switching and all, we kind of lose ourselves because now you're saying I need to be this person and uh, play this role to be this instead mm -hmm. of I can be me and show my genuine character in this this setting yeah mm -hmm. so. yeah so but that's what I, I try to tell them because they try to tell me that I'm going to get canceled <laughs> all the time because of some of the stuff that he, I say on the podcast. Oh my goodness, he's feeling he's feel, he's in his feelings right now. Oh. No, because sometimes some things you do say, <laughs> I'm telling you, our, our our thousand subscribers, we thank y'all for sticking with us because y'all may be saying some things that are just off. The thousand we, the subscribers the thousand appreciate plus. me being my. Authentic self, and that's why they follow. They us do. They I appreciate. They yeah. they do appreciate you. I, I have to say too. <laughs> I think that we live in a world where it's taught us not to be our authentic self. So mm -hmm. people say don't that. know how to receive <laughs> truth. They don't know how to. Like I've had people say like. Oh, you're you're cocky or you're arrogant, but the, because of my confidence, and you don't know what mm. confidence is, you don't know how to identify it. You give me a, a negative name because sure. you've never seen it, right? And so I think we live in a generation where everything is like if you look at all the models on Instagram, they all look alike. The nails yep. are like, the hair are like, right? Yep. Every every season, like you see the same things happening. So when you see someone stand out. It's like, oh, that's unfamiliar. I don't, mm. that's weird. You know, they don't know how to receive it. Yep. So I just think being authentic is the best way to be, but it means you have to do some work. And a lot of people mm. don't want to face themselves. Yeah. And that's the hard thing. That's interesting. Um, you know, I always say though, you know, when people are, because I'm confident, I'd like to say I'm also very, quite outspoken, but um, I would, I would say, you know, if someone is, Put off by my confidence. That sounds like a you problem, not a absolutely. Me problem. Absolutely, you know it, that is absolutely your problem. <laughs> yeah, because I know who I am. Yes, I know how God made me, and it took me a while to get there. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, but now that I, you know, almost being forty, I feel a little something. You look good. I feel a little something, <laughs> something. Okay. Um, well, I'm but, about to be forty four, so I'm into being my authentic self. Oh so. yeah, yeah. You getting old and grumpy? Stop it. <laughs> Old and grumpy. Oh, you getting man. grumpy. See how they, see how they treat me? I can okay. see that. A little bit. Oh my goodness. No, I'm telling you, we yeah. <laughs> we we love we loved our Jami. We but I too. think like as we grow, we get to say, like, I don't care what no one thinks. Like That's you it. have enough lived experiences. I'm, I'm like it. your opinion has not made me one dollar. Okay. Like, <laughs> we gotta stop. Yeah. My bills are paid. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So exactly. I think that with age comes that wisdom and knowing like mm, your opinion really doesn't matter. That's right? the truth. That's and, the truth. And being okay with that. So I'm with it. That's why I'm okay. I'm okay turning 40 because the, the life experiences are, are really starting to kick in and I'm I'm enjoying um 
again, being my authentic self. But like you said, it's very important being able to have that wisdom to navigate different spaces. Yes. Um, because you can't, you know, go into, you can't go into a China shop with a bulldozer, you know, or, you know, you can't go somewhere, you know, it doesn't make sense for you to be head banging at an or uh, orchestra concert. Absolutely. We have to have wisdom and um, just, if you can, just speak on that a little bit more, especially as women. We have um, a lot of our audience is bl black women. Okay. Um, so can you speak to um, just having that wisdom and navigating spaces as black women? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I notice, especially with black women, because we have been told how to be, mm -hmm. we get to a place where we're rigid about conforming or adjusting or changing mm. and I think that the more we can release what was said about us we can show up authentically mm. and that wisdom comes but it's important to learn how to be professional it's a skill set right yeah. so learning the skill sets to get you where you need to be is important opposed to saying well I'm not changing because of this or mm -hmm. I'm not doing this because of that well you blocking your own blessing you're not hurting anyone but yourself yeah. you know so I think um especially for our black women, like we have been told so many things of what we can't do, where we can't go, how we have to act, how we have to look. So it feels like we have to change who we are to be in those spaces when reality, it's just learning to adjust and learning a new skill set. That's so good. Um, yeah, that's like, um, we don't think about the subconscious, like social conditioning that we face. Yeah. Like I was talking to somebody mm -hmm. about how, you know, when black people get together, we laugh, but when we laugh, we cover our mouth up. But that came from your, maybe not your grandmother or your great grandmother or your yeah. great great grandmother may have been an actual slave and your grandmother saw your great grandmother when she laughed, cover her mouth up mm. because you wasn't supposed to laugh and make a whole lot of noise because the master would hear you. You weren't supposed to be happy. Yeah, yeah right. You're supposed, supposed to be, to be happy. happy. Yeah, yeah. You're in yeah. trouble. Yeah. Do yeah. stuff quiet. And even when I read like real estate documents, like I was reading the um, uh, HOA documents and stuff like that, it's words in there, and I'm like, what? It'll say like quiet enjoyment. Mm -hmm. quiet this quiet that I was reading I was like why is quiet in here so many <laughs> daggone times yeah. like, there's quiet hours in Henderson after 10 o'clock yeah. right. the quiet you can enjoy your home but it got to be the quiet, quiet enjoyment of it so it's like social conditioning yeah. from HOA docs to you saw your grandmother do it you saw your great grandmother do it and you mm -hmm. thought that's what you were supposed to do but no it's a time when you get around your friends and you have a kickback or something you want to be loud. You want to laugh. You want to cry. You want to get your stress out. And mm -hmm. it's the time to be professional. But, you know, you feel like, oh, you're at a restaurant. I'm not going to be loud in front of all these people. Yeah. Um, but it's like a lot of subconscious, like, beliefs, you know, stuff, yeah. beliefs that we talk about. So it's a time to, you got to know when to be professional and, you know, when you wear a different hat. So um, in your bio, it says that you are a wardrobe consultant. So tell us about the importance of uh, how you dress in business. So we're talking about like it's a difference between having to code switch or just being professional in whatever setting that you're in. Tell us about like the importance of your ward wardrobe. Is it more you coach from a confidence standpoint or is girl, I don't know how to dress like. Both. <laughs> uh, a lot of women first come like, I don't know how to dress. I don't know how to put it together. But it really is the lack of confidence. Mm. Um, but wardrobe for me is people will judge you based off of what you look like. So yes. they see yeah. you first before you even get to open up your mouth. Mm -hmm. So the importance of being professional or dressing professionally is super important in business because you're going to be judged, right? It, it just yeah. is how we are naturally, like you said, subconsciously made. We're going to look at someone or I'm like, mm, you yeah. know, um, why she wear those shoes? Why she, why exactly <laughs> that? Why does she have that big oversized shirt on? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so I think it's important, especially with your brand, who do you want to be and who do you, how do you want people to see you and what are you representing? You are your brand. Yes. Whether you sell pickles or you sell real estate, right? Yeah. Like you're still your brand. And sure. so you want people to, you want to represent that brand in its best way. So to me, your, your look, your wardrobe says everything about you. And then 
honestly, when we talk about confidence and, and esteem or how we feel about when you get dressed and you take time to get yourself together, you feel better. So guess what? You're going to yes. show up in the world feeling better and confident and you're ready to conquer your day. When you throw it on, you rush and you, oh my God, you look like that. right? Yeah. So it's really, really important. And some of the things that I teach is how to get dressed really quick, quick techniques, how to dress your body type. Um, and, and being able to switch pieces, right? You yes. can have a day look and a night and look, a night right? Look. Put a blazer on or take it off, you know? So those things help you make a huge impact on what you look like, especially in our community. <laughs> um, we really have to, like, shift this mindset of, like, I am who I am. Like, mm, you are, you but are. let's just... We got to elevate it. We got to elevate it. We got to elevate it. Just a lot hey, of it. You more. know what? I, I, you know, I will... This is confessional time for me because I... I'm like that. I'm, but I've, I've elevated. I've gotten better. But, um, you know, when I first... Especially get, getting into real estate, coming out of the, the first business that I own, being around children and... Uh, my on-site event child care company, it was T-shirt and jeans all day. And I loved it. Um, it just, like, I love my T-shirt and jeans, sweats, all the things, um, oversized everything. You know, <laughs> just, I'm hiding. I'm whatever it is, hiding, I'm hiding yeah. in there. Can we but, just pause and say, give credit where credit is due? That Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I knew I it. originated and oh I started goodness. the glow up of Nikki Willis. Can we just stay? Okay. <laughs> I'm yeah, I do want to put in that Coach Amber J always looks great. Like yes, we're talking she about does. the the public <laughs> setting, the the private, like everything. She, she don't go nowhere. Fit slack. Is, this whole fit is Thank giving. Um, but yeah, so um, I. But as I got into real estate, and as we begin to grow our real estate business, uh, I knew I needed to elevate. Yeah, and you know I needed to. Get a, get a couple of blazers, get, you know, some staple dresses and some staple pieces and yes. things like that. And it really, it actually, one, it did change my confidence. Yeah. I felt, okay, I do belong in these spaces. Absolutely. I do feel, you know, that I am worthy of, you know, your business and all the other things. And it began to shift. And even my clientele began to shift. Yeah. Truly, truly. So this is like, this is good stuff. And so now I'm curious, <laughs> uh, Coach Amber, because, um, you know, I see you got the blazer on and all the things. What are your, what are a woman's top five pieces that they must have in their wardrobe? Um, like you said, a staple black dress. Okay. Okay. Right. And make sure it's fitting, right? Because again, mm -hmm. sometimes if you're oversized or you're, you know, you're in between sizes, mm -hmm. you think like, oh, if I get a bigger dress, I'll look better. No, you actually look worse. Mm -hmm. So get a nice fitted staple black dress, a black blazer, a black pant, like get a whole suit, right? Okay. Um, and then get some outfits that you're comfortable in. Like a part of my brand is, is image your way. So get mm -hmm. things that make you still comfortable. So if you are a Tennessee mm -hmm. girl, make sure you got a cute, cute pair of tennis shoes. If you yes. want to wear jeans, have some nice, cute jeans that are fitted that you can put a belt on and you can put a blazer with it, right? Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. are some of the staple things. And I'm a heel girl, so make sure you know how to walk in your heels. Yes. Ladies, if you're going to wear heels. You got Please to learn how to walk in them. Some of y'all out here looking like Bambi. Oh. And listen, let me tell you, listen. we just got to be real. We just got to be real out here. We got to learn how to walk heel toe, heel toe, and stop looking like newborn giraffes out here. We got to. Or just don't wear them. Yeah. Put on a kitten shoes. heel is nice, you know, something smaller, Plus, maybe if you can't, yeah, if, or a wedge. A wedge, there's wedge options. has the you can distribute the weight a little bit better yes. with the wedge. Yes, I thought we didn't like kitten heels. No, um, I, I'm not a kitten heel, fan. you know, but they're it, coming in. I don't, I don't like kitten heels either, don't but some, me. some. We well, don't do not buy me, me a kitten heel, no, I knew, but, <laughs> but I, that's what I've seen. No, 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 I like so, them high. But you got to know how to walk, but you got to know how to walk yes. in them, and that's the key. And again, if you can't walk in heels, they have. So many different options to wear some cute flats with a tip, a, a, you know, different ways yes. to wear a cute flat heel. But ladies, please learn how to walk in the heels. Yeah. Like if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it, you got to do, do it. it. Do it right. That's okay? it. Um, do you and then, teach your, your clients how to walk in heels? Yes. I love this. I have a whole technique on how to break in a new pair of heels, um, put them on the wrong feet, walk around them in the house, clean your house and your heels. Yeah. Put them on the wrong feet. Yes. It really? breaks open your shoe. Yeah. I was watching uh, <laughs> Ice, Ice T's wife, Coco. She right works out in heels. 
She That's got, another like, great yeah, technique. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I'm not trying to get corns and bunions. I'm just saying. Nah. <laughs> but if you stretch your shoe out, they won't be corns and bunions. That's true. So. That's true. I heard you put socks on to break them in. So mm-hmm. I just put them on the wrong foot, mm. opposite side shoe, and just walk around in the house, mm-hmm. vacuum, just stretch them out a little bit. Um, it doesn't hurt, actually. So mm-hmm. mm, that yeah. is this is <laughs> such good information. And it's little <laughs> techniques that make a huge difference. So when you are out, mm-hmm. another thing that drives me crazy: women do mm-hmm. not wear heels, and your feet hurt, and you take them off, and you walk around barefooted. Yep. Ever. Please don't do that. Agreed. <laughs> like, Agreed. Get you some a little cute something you can something put in your purse. Into, yeah, you a little cute into. little ballet flat or something. Something, please. Agreed. But um, walk, learn. That's the main. Walk, learn how to walk in your shoes, mm-hmm. please. <laughs> that's so good. The okay. other important thing that a woman should have is a good undergarment. Yes. That is important to have in your wardrobe. Oh, yeah. What, what we can't, what is going to be the biggest distract, distraction is you in the boardroom and you're making the, the biggest pitch of your life and you're walking around that boardroom and you're selling it and all those people can see is two people just fighting underneath your dress because you ain't got, you don't have the right foundations and all they're seeing is this. We got to do better. We have to do better. Good shapewear is key. Good shapewear is key. And, you know, that's something that's not taught to us. Yeah. So. But now there's shapewear everywhere, which I love. And black-owned brands, too. Yeah. That have uh, great shapewear. So there's, like, no excuse to, um, when, like you said, because we got to get, it needs to be fitted to our, you know, to our our body, our body shape, our body style. And just being able to, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. As, as someone who is former t-shirt and jeans all day, it, you will feel so much better when you dress it with intentionality, right? Absolutely. Even fitted, mm. your jeans make a difference as well. Yeah. So, so mom difference. jeans, you know, don't, don't wear those out. Or make sure they fit you properly, like the yeah. top. Like, you just mm-hmm. got to also know your body type. So dress appropriately to your body type. That mm. is also important. And see, that's why we have Coach Amber J here. Because you can just call her too. Yeah, you, that's you what I'm saying. I do a yeah. wardrobe. We can go and remake your whole closet. Yeah, see, that's I what I was getting ready you. to ask. Like, oh, what, what do oh. we do if we need help? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so yeah, like Jen said, what do we do? What do we do? I How do we help. reach? I need you? help with a question, real quick. Okay. We can go back to this. I can't really. I don't have much to add to these <laughs> conversations oh, right okay. now. Yeah. You know okay. Yeah. Like? We got and you. I got, I'll tell you what I like, and then I'm gonna ask you a question. Stockings. I like stockings. I mm. think stockings are dope. Like, is stockings in or out, or is it like not good business etiquette if you got like a pattern or like is it just plain Jane? Or I, how I, do you feel about stockings? So I think stockings are appropriate for, like she said, maybe like a boardroom where you're with all mm. men, right? You don't want to if you're selling a million dollar pitch, you don't want them to be distracted by mm. your legs, maybe. Um, but stockings, especially nowadays, I think we've gone so far away from stockings. I I hate stockings. Yeah, I, hate I, I, I do like too. Stockings. I hate stockings. That's but, what I was going to say. Mean, it, de- it depends on what you say because then he's going to look at me and go, because he likes them, but I, I don't like them. I don't like them either. They're uncomfortable. They yeah, rip easily. They so do. I just think that it just depends on the setting you're in. So mm-hmm. depending where you're going, what you're wearing, what you're doing, but it's optional. I don't, don't say it. Don't has worry, to be Amber. He just wanted me to wear a pair. Hope he's lost for stockings, especially because out here it's like real hot too. So that's probably like definitely not a makes good. you hotter. Or is that, yes. Okay. All right. So but I think they have a place. You know, they can. They have a place. Okay. But I wouldn't say it would be mandatory. Okay. See. All there right. We go. Okay. So back to the consult. So if a woman, she they don't have low confidence. She confident in herself, but she like. Okay, I got clothes, but I don't know how to put them together. So you do a whole like I do a whole consultation where you pull up to the, come to your house. Your we clean your we, we go through here. your whole wardrobe. We get rid of things that you know you're never gonna get back into. And being honest about that, mm-hmm. <laughs> we hold on to things um, and then Urgent. match outfits. Like dress. Yeah, yeah, like you're not gonna get back in size two. Like let's let's yeah. be honest yeah. with ourselves, right? Yeah. yeah. And but then sometimes other- it takes that person, that outside yeah. person, to say, "Hey, sis, you had this. You bought this twenty years ago. 
Yeah. Even if you could retire. fit it, it's not in style. Right. That, that, that is, is not awesome. a classic. It's yeah, not. It's, it's just not. old. <laughs> it's just old. Okay, so that that's good. Um, so we get a an outside perspective, and sometimes that's what's needed. Yeah. A lot yeah. of times that's what's needed. Yeah, because we can get in our head, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. helping someone clear out that clutter in your head and in your closet. Um, I go through a whole, uh, we do a budget, we do a shopping list. I can shop with you online, in person. So wow. I call it a VIP shopping day. So I love that. Yeah. I think that's pretty dope. You can do take you can go shopping with somebody help them pick out the outfit that they need or like staple pieces or even for the busy professional who's just like I just don't have time to shop mm-hmm. I don't like to shop I yeah, just don't have me. time so finding their outfits I shop for them um pick their outfits or if you're going to like an event a, a gala and you're like I need an outfit I can go look for that or buy you know shop for you so those are some of the options that I offer so, um, like a human quick. Amazon button. <laughs> I, I can say that. I like that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I kind of like the Olivia Pope. We kind of going down <laughs> right. with I the like names. Amazon. Let's go back up. Let's go back up. We, we, we have the Olivia Pope. Is a multi-billion dollar brand. Um, yeah, right. So some people, you know, and maybe you've heard women say, well, you know what? I'm just, I'm just born this way. I'm a quiet person or, you know, I'm, I just don't have... You know, I'm just not a super confident person. Or I'm, and, you know, are, do you believe, like, people are just born a certain way and that's just how they are? Or can, do you believe everyone can change in some way? I believe everyone can definitely change. I think it's definitely a lot of mindset. That's why, for me, coaching is so important because we have to shift a lot of things, right? Our mm-hmm. mindset is one of them. So when we coach... Mm-hmm. Even wardrobe, like we got to coach first. We got to do a whole consultation. We got to really talk about and get some of these deep rooted issues up Mm -hmm. first so that you have room for it. But I believe that we all, if you look at children, they naturally come into the world and they, yeah, maybe you might be more, a little more reserved, but you're, you'll see kids. Okay. It may take a little bit longer for them to um, warm up to people, but Mm -hmm. they naturally connect. They naturally engage. Mm -hmm. And I think that. Um, we lose that as we become adults, like harm, mm. trauma, um, belief systems, the way that we were raised, right? Sure. A lot of those things get in the way. So I believe that we can become whoever we desire to be, right? I love it's that. just willing to do the work and face yourself, um, face some of that trauma. And one of the things I see a lot is like, well, that's how my mom did it, or that's how, well, Ooh. that let's let go of those traditions because they no longer serve you right Mm -hmm. or serve the woman or the man that you want to become so we got to release that and create new ones that's so good so okay coach amber who would you say then is your your ideal client so my ideal client is like one of those super busy professionals who never have time Mm. (laughs) um Mm. that are doing a million things but have literally lost themselves so Mm. One of those that like they look like they have it all together, but behind the scenes, their budget is a mess, their house is a mess, kids are out of order. Mm-hmm. Um, in reality, they they just lost their self, but mm-hmm. they've learned how to show up in this space, mm-hmm. one space only. Um, so my ideal client, I would say, is that very busy professional who's just like, I'm I'm busy, I'm mm-hmm. tired, I I don't have time for that. That's the favorite word. Or I'm too busy to do that. Mm-hmm. They're burning out. Yep, they're they're, burning they're, out. they're on their way, just yes. kind of a, a snowball effect where, yeah. where the train is now out of control and it's just going downhill from there. So now, after the transformation, or, well, let's talk about it. How long does the, does the transformation take? So usually I like to work with a client for six months. Hmm. Okay. Because yeah, there's we got to go through a whole trend, a mindset shift, mm-hmm. and then we we have things in place, and then we take action. Mm-hmm. So um, I will say six months, I'll see transformation. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's good. What's like a like the biggest like glow up or success story that you've had, like that you've seen or that you work with somebody as far as like they started here and it was like wow, like. Um, I've had a couple of women. One, I would say, probably like a recent client. She um, wanted to do wanted to become a coach, but she just didn't know where to start. Mm. And she's like, "I have these tools, I have these things, but I don't know how to put them in place." So, 
helping her put them these things into perspective, like again, dealing with the confidence, building yourself up, mm -hmm. creating the brand that you believe in and showing up and then actually putting it into action. And she texted me the other day. She's like, I got my first client. Yes. So it's like, oh, like, so seeing you start from like nothing, like, I don't know where to go. I don't have a plan. I don't have a strategy. Mm -hmm. And then we give you a strategy and you put it in action. And then you're like, I got my first client. Like I love that. that, I love that. Like, Yay, shout oh. out to you. <laughs> Hopefully you're watching. Yay. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Girl, that is awesome. Yes. Um, so... After the after the transformation, <clears throat> excuse me. After the transformation, um, how I, I'm sure there's like maintenance that's kind of has to continue yeah. to go on, and um, burnout is not one singular time. You know, no. sometimes you can experience burnout in multiple phases of your life, and so my question is how how do we prevent burnout or what are some ways we can kind of prevent burnout so uh, usually when my clients reach back out to me because i do maintenance with them mm -hmm. i know they stop doing what they're supposed to do and when i say mm. what they're supposed to do that means what is your morning routine are you doing your affirmations are you resting do you have a schedule like if you are not doing these foundational things mm. you're going to reach burnout because these essential foundational things as we elevate, we still have to utilize them, mm. right? So you can't having, forget once you we can't forget there. once you're there because once you hit another level, you're at the beginning again, right? Mm. So every level is going to require foundational keys, mm -hmm. which I call them. Mm -hmm. So you use those keys over and over and over, right? You can't like forsake them. So mm -hmm. whatever morning routines are or your schedule is, like those are vital, especially as you're you're climbing the ladder. Like you need to have these things in place, right? Just like mm -hmm. we check our emails, yeah. you need to have your schedule. Like I don't wake up without this routine or I don't go to bed without doing these things. So those are the key things that are important for clients are the foundational things. Mm, that's good. Do do does everybody have the same set of keys or is it different for each person? It's going to be different for each person, right? Like okay. if you don't have kids, your schedule is going to look different, but you still sure. need a schedule. So that's one of sure. the foundational things, right? Um some people don't work with writing out a schedule. Some need it on their phone. Some needs alarm. So whatever works best for you and knowing mm. yourself, really knowing yourself that adjusts to you. Like for me, like I'm not a gym girl, but I love to go hiking. So mm. part of my workout regimen is going on a hike or walking. So what works yeah. for you and implementing in that to you and sticking to that. That's the biggest thing is being mm. consistent and disciplined because um, that will prevent burnout. That's good. And so you, as, as a, the coach, you provide that accountability. Yes. And it sounds like you, you help your client discover what their specific Yes. keys are and their routine because because everyone is different Every, but yes. that's what the coaching part comes in because sometimes we can't figure it out yeah and we need somebody from the outside to help us kind of figure out okay what works best for us and what gets us into that routine to, so that we can avoid burnout and then too like especially for women we are controlled by our feelings right i may mm. not feel like it today but I know I need to get this done. Mm -hmm. So when you have like an accountability partner or you know you have a schedule or you have these things to do, yep. it allows you to trump those feelings and get things done, right? Mm -hmm. um, or because I know I have a schedule, like there's a season in my life that I had naps in my schedule. Like I need a, a nap. Mm -hmm. like, you Let know? me write that down real quick because I might <laughs> need a nap. Right. I need a nap, right? And I literally, I would put 15 minutes in before I picked the kids up. Mm. Like I had this nap schedule and it just made my life a lot better, especially if I know I'm networking or I have yes. to go to other events. That 20 minute like, nap means everything. It, it changes your whole demeanor. So those are important things that we don't think make a big difference, but they do. Like mm. even putting in a snack, eating, like did you eat yeah. lunch today? Right. Because <laughs> we can neglect those things that keep us fueled. So yep. those are the things that I also help. This make is you remember. so good. <laughs> this is so good. Um, I want I want to move us into our current events. Okay. Well, I got one um, but, last question. Oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You might you might do it. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> All right. So before we get to the current events, we need like a like a Jerry Springer takeaway. So like well, like that's like one tip that you can give for people to 
overcome or just to start to overcome. They they didn't prevent it. They are they burnt out. Like to overcome it. Like what's like one tip that you can give as a takeaway for people to overcome burnout. I would say the number one key I would give for overcoming burnout is take a step back. Mm. Take a step back. Like nothing's, you're not going to lose anything. No one's going to die. I tell my, the kids are okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But take a step back. And when you take a step back, it allows you to look at the full picture of what's Mm -hmm. working, what's not working, especially as entrepreneurs, we're in the business. We're not just, we're working the business. We're in the business. We're doing the business. So sometimes we need to give ourselves a moment just to take a step back and like, maybe I'm flying away too much at this and Mm -hmm. there's not getting results. Maybe I should try a different strategy. Right. Mm -hmm. But I would say if you're in a space of burnout, take a step back, Mm -hmm. take a day, turn your phones off, disconnect. And just really give yourself a moment to take a nap, to breathe, to wake up, readjust, refocus, and then plug back in. It's just mm-hmm. like our phone. We need to be able to recharge it, right? So yeah. you got to take a step back and just take a moment and really look at the big picture. The mm-hmm. other thing, if you don't have goals in place and you just going, 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 you're going to burn out. So you need mm-hmm. a things to do list. You need to know you have goals. You need to be in alignment with those things. Mm-hmm. If not, say no to things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Or you just need to call Coach Amber J. Yeah. That, that. Okay. okay. You, see how, you see how I did that there? You see how I did that? Uh, so, uh, Coach Amber, before we move into current events, I want to plug in right here where people can find you. So, everything Coach Amber J, I do offer a free 30-minute consultation. You can go to my website, coachamberj.com, and then we can have a conversation because I don't work with everyone. So, you have mm. to be committed, willing, and ready to work with me and be really willing to face yourself. So, um, CoachAmberJ.com. I love it. I love it. All right. So um, we'll also put that in the description mm-hmm. below. Definitely check her out. Y'all, she is amazing. Can you tell? Like, this is this is good. This is good. But uh, we like to move into current events because, you know, here at the Willis House, you know, we like everybody to get to, to, to know, to get to know our guests. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first current event. <laughs> uh we here in Las Vegas, you know, we always have events and things yeah. happening here. And and the Lovers and Friends concert got canceled. Got the, canceled. the festival, the, the whole festival. weekend I... got canceled the day before. Yeah. The day before uh, because of wind conditions. Now, in, in full disclosure, Las Vegas is actually the second windiest city in the nation yes. uh, outside of... Um, it's Chicago. Chicago's okay. number one. That's Las Vegas cool. is actually number two. It is, when it gets windy, it is no joke here, right? No joke. Okay, no. so, because um, I know people were like going live. They're like, where's the wind? Where's the wind? And I'm like, hold on. Just just <laughs> hang on in <laughs> there. Just hang on. Because <laughs> you're just going to snatch your wig off around 8 o'clock. And Lashes then and everything. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, y'all got to chill. But, um, wow, how do you feel? I know there was there were some things um some other like influencer type of people saying, you know, this this could have been prevented at a, you know, being at a different venue. But so how do you feel about, you know, I, I love me some Usher. We all Did we, you have are, those tickets, Coach Amber? I did not have Was those tickets. To see Lil John? I wasn't, Would but I had I have friends that came in just for that. So mm. I felt awful for them. And I do think that it could have been prevented. Like okay. we could have put it in a different venue. Okay. I, I, That's my opinion. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think. But to cancel the a, day before, like yeah. that, and then you're just gonna repay me thirty days. So I'm a little yeah. salty about how done. it was canceled and how yeah. it was handled. I think that we, as Las Vegas, as the capital of events, we could have did better. I, I I can see that. I can see that. You know, when I get I get so. To be, I don't like saying devil's advocate, but to play the other side of the coin, I do understand from an event standpoint, um, you know, weather conditions, especially when you're having an outside of event, event, weather conditions can really change an event. However, uh, you know, we always say have a plan B. If you're going to be outside, you got to have a plan B. Absolutely. Period, point blank. Now, you know, when you're talking thousands and upon thousands of people, you know, swarming in on something, it's kind of hard to make a quick shift, but I do think something could have happened because we look at, you know, nowadays, 
back in the day, you you could see like the five the next maybe five days ahead. Now you can watch the news and they can tell you two weeks from now what's gonna happen. I agree. And the so, Jazz Fest happened this weekend and that wasn't canceled. Ooh. But they what didn't have as big of a setup, though. Like, and the were they outside? Fest, they were they outside. Were, they were still outside. Mm. What jazz fest? I didn't hear nothing about it. There was, was a jazz, jazz festival at the, at, at the at the government center, the or government something. building. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Did I not know they, about this? I would have <laughs> we were in the bed by the time <laughs> that was. No, recently. it starts early. Yeah, it's oh. a jazz fest. Ain't nobody. It's like two five to ten, I think, something like that. But you the lovers thinking. and friends set up. You know, they have these big stages, stages that they yeah, built they have multiple and stages like, and all that stuff. And I, I do believe because you also have to think about not just like the people that are there. You also have to think about the workers That's and the true. safety of the workers. You know, um, if you're talking even 30 miles an hour winds, winds and start shaking the, those trusses, it can really be dangerous for the workers that are there. So I, I get it. I get I just that. I, I know y'all could have seen this coming. That's my point. Like, and I think they should have had a way to to pivot. Mm -hmm. Like, as an entrepreneur, mm. we have to know how to pivot. We do. We and nobody do. knows what they don't know behind the scenes. So mm. if you shifted to a whole nother venue or maybe made it smaller or maybe not had all the stages, I just Something. feel like it could have been handled a little bit differently. But somebody we, somebody on standby, another venue on we standby. We have too much yeah. stuff going on. We got scheduling. You can't be like, oh, it's going to be outside. Oh, now it's going to be at the Michelob Ultra Center. They got... Well, you know, I mean, else we have, have a lot of casinos, we have a lot, a lot, of, a lot of convention space. Like, that we have a lot of places. Utilized. Yeah. And again, like you said, we have technology. We can see a week ahead of time. And it was when, windy on Wednesday, on right. Thursday. So they and had time to had pivot. Ample time. Well, not, I won't say, because I don't know who's in the, who's in the, the room. Who's the promoter? Who's the promoter? Well, Usher was beat. devastated, okay? He said he was <laughs> devastated. So, no, but like, you know, it just... There, there's talks that you know they might not do a lovers and friends anymore festival here, and that's sad. No, nah, they're gonna do it again. Yeah, I mean well, this is Las Vegas. One thing that I lovers learned, and friends had an incident two years ago. Oh, here again? Did they not? I don't want to, but wasn't there incident? activity going on at that? Um, was it that two years ago? Now, see, I'm not one. Now y'all gonna make me Google something. Man, I don't you got like your Google. computer. All I know is, you remember that was the time we was trying to have a picnic, and I was trying to have a grill out at Anthem Park, and it was like so windy. Oh, my all goodness. Stuff and that was your birthday, away. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I felt so bad. So I can see how, like, you know, uh, uh, towers of speakers of, could mm -hmm. fall over somebody. Yeah. And then that's a whole and lawsuit. That's whole, right. Like, so, like, if Scott, you put all that trampled. stuff up, they have to have time to take all that stuff down. I agree. Yeah. So they had to, you know, cancel it. But Keith Lee, that he was going to have something... Um, he still ended up he doing still something. Did. He, he pivoted. pivoted. That's all I want to talk about. So he pivoted. He was like, y'all, I just posted that. He's like, I'm at a loss for words. Ten minutes later, they canceled it. So he made phone calls and made it happen. Now, of course, his audience size is smaller than the actual Right. Event. It's easy to pivot. It's hard to pivot 20,000 mm -hmm. people outside with five stages and three people mm -hmm. performing at the same time. Yeah. I, I just think it could. they could have did a better <clears throat> job at... Planning, mm. maybe planning was the issue. I maybe. don't know. But we weren't. We weren't in the room. We weren't. But a lot of the artists did pop up in different places, which yeah. they had before. Like the event got canceled, and you know now everybody's at the pool at yeah. X, Y, or Z yeah. uh, or hotel. They go to so. Dre's, or they go to yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah somebody they speak easy. Thing? They did. It, they did Skate City. Um, where people were popping up there. So you know, if I. If you were a, a small business, I hope that you were able to recoup some of the things that were lost. Yeah, I know. You know, some people. Uh, I watched this lady say she traveled all the way from LA. She had a vegan uh, restaurant mm -hmm. and couldn't do anything because she's not permitted here. Oh, so she just, just had the to, event. Yep, she had to. Um, you know, because she said, "Well, we thought about opening up on the corner somewhere, but we're not permitted here, and I don't want to get mm -hmm. shut down." And um, and then she realized, like, okay, the winds are kind of high, so I don't want my workers getting, um, getting hurt. And so she just, they just had to turn around and, and head back home. So, um, but I hope that some other businesses were hopefully able to make some adjustments and and even find because I always believe you can um, 
you know, there's business opportunities when you when you see a need, right? Yes, yeah. There's need. like a business opportunity. Okay, listen, lovers and friends might be canceled, but I got a venue over here. Yeah, much smaller. Hey, y'all, come on over here. Let's do this. You yeah. know. Um. So, and we can talk about that so much. <laughs> but you know who this wouldn't have happened to? Who? Keith Urban. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Keith Urban, that's probably. This is probably Jen's boy. So Keith Urban. I do like Keith Urban. Oh, do you, Jen? Yeah. Oh. Jen is our resident country uh, I love country and rodeo too. expert. Yeah. You we'll don't even have you. no cowboy boots. You ain't really about that. Me? Life. Jen, do you yeah. have cowboy boots? Yeah. Uh, I told you. Oh, so I'm yeah. the only one in the group yeah. that knows. Do you yeah, own you. cowboy boots? I don't. Thank no. you. Y'all we have really we, Las Vegas people. I got cowboy boots. You know, oh, I just need I'm going to get me some cowboy yeah. boots. I need the belt. Boot I'll country. Right. You get like two. Buy one, get one free at boot country. I see that. all. The, I was just looking at the ad the other day. <laughs> I got cowboy I'm boots. Okay. I'm going to try some boots. To anyway. Okay, fine. So let me do my plug. Okay. Keith ahead. Urban announces his Las Vegas residency. See, he was smart. He going inside. So. <laughs> Country music star, he will headline a new residency mm-hmm. at where we went to recently, the Fountain Blue yeah. in Las Vegas. So this is starting mm-hmm. in October, October 14th. Uh, Keith Urban's High in Vegas will have 10 exclusive perform- performances and feature music from a uh, new album that he's coming out with this fall. And I'm sure the gin is all pumped and ready for yeah, it. ready for album. it. I'm Girl, excited. Girls Let's night. Go. Keith Urban. Keith is he Urban. like is he like up there, Jen? Is he Keith He's Urban? one of the good ones, yeah. Like he's still um what we would call like a like a more traditional country. Okay. You know, so there's the new that's, you know, more pop, more um not even like leaning into to rap and work with with hip hop artist country, mm-hmm. but he's more traditional, you know, twang, I guess. So country, it's like country. when doing yeah. the Grammys when they like Keith Urban is about to perform. That's when I get up and go get a snack. <laughs> <laughs> you miss it. You see what you see. Why we have to just kind of. I'm I'm country in the dress. I don't really like the music. Oh, okay. I have I the like cowboy the boots. Like I'm gonna get me a I belt. Really like I'm music. gonna even get the hat. I'll even go to a rodeo, but the music I. You know. gotta you gotta get you some. I mean, Rascal Flats. You know I like the song. Little, uh, Shania <laughs> Twain. Now she was like Shania the first Twain, where it yeah. was like a crossover between, for me at least, it was like a crossover between that country and pop sound. Right. I don't feel I like she's country. I love her. I can get with Shania Twain. That's my country. She's though. country. Mm-hmm. She's oh. country, baby. Okay. Anyway, um, so Jen's gonna go. To, I'll be there. To see Keith yeah. Urban. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, the Met Met Gala just just happened. Yep. You're in the fashion. Did you watch it? Or? So. I'm really not into fashion. Oh, I just well, know how to dress. I was not, you you could have you could have fooled me. I, I'm not big on the trends and and keeping up with fashion no. that way. I just dress to impress. Oh, okay. okay. So the the Met the Met it's like the gala. basketball players that don't watch basketball on TV. Yeah. Mm, I get. Listen, we focused on what we out here doing. Yes. I get it. Uh, the Met Gala happened um, Monday, and it's a essentially a bunch of avant-garde looks. So people are able to kind of just be as creative as possible. And um, some really cool um, outfits came. Rihanna wasn't there. She had the flu. She Aww. did. So I hope you. I hope we are feeling better, Rihanna. We love yeah, you. We um, Usher showed up looking like Zorro. Yeah. It yep. was different. Did. did you see Cardi Beautiful B's gowns. dress? It was like a big, like, 20-foot Two things. She needed like six so how people. How did she sit down? Did they have like a cook? I don't, I don't know. She well, usually down, from what I understand, from what I understand, they walk in again. I didn't watch it, but I was just like to just go on Instagram and see what people was wearing. So from what I understand, they have like a second outfit once they get up the steps and into the actual gala. Like you don't walk around with that. It's just your okay. arrival outfit. Your entrance. Yeah. Your There's grand, no way your the seats will hold all, <laughs> yeah, of, all of that. I mean, you can't even, you can barely sit down. Tyla, um, the uh, artist that, uh, that did Water, mm-hmm. that song, she, I loved her dress. It was like sand. The, mm. the material was like sand. And so she looked like a, um, I, I can't even, I can't even describe it, but it was really, really pretty. If you haven't seen it. Yeah, and she had it. a, Hourglass purse. 
which was really oh, cool. I know, cute. I know. It, <laughs> she had the, the hair was like the wet look. And yeah, she just looked like she came out of sand. It was beautiful. Oh, Absolutely beautiful. I think that was my favorite one. Um, you know, Kim's waist was a size negative three. Um, <laughs> I don't know what she had on like a it was really like an optical illusion or something. Corset. Like her waist was like looked like she didn't have no ribs mm-hmm. and she couldn't walk up the steps by herself. Yeah. But that but, uh, the, these avant-garde looks, like some people have to get carried up the steps, and okay. like it's really it's quite interesting. But um, you know, it 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 gets a lot of looks. Um, I believe they raised a lot of money for for it. So I didn't know it was cost. a fundraiser, so I read about it. So apparently, it's like a fundraiser, mm-hmm. and the main person is the big fashion person Anna Winter. Mm-hmm. So she is like big person on there but I didn't know it was like a fundraiser and then every mm-hmm. year they have like a theme and yes. you dress the creatively theme. for the theme so it's like the Oscars or Emmys for um fashion. for fashion, fashion. Yeah. yeah so it's like the quite interesting party interesting. of the year I learned something new today mm-hmm. J-Lo yeah. she was there she was there J-Lo. yeah um Sarah Jessica Parker was there you know all the fashion, fashion people, people were were there Ed Sheeran was there who was that? Um, somebody said he was dressed like Troy <laughs> Bolton <laughs> off of um, High School Musical. <laughs> 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 off the crime scene of <laughs> High School Musical. Okay. Um, hey, listen, I'm I'm just sharing what I saw. Now is it, he's not considered country, right? No, he's no, pop. He's not pop. considered country, but he's at a all. great songwriter. Amazing, amazing. What's songwriter. my boy? My boy, I like. Was he there? Um, he was in a boy, like a boy group. Hmm. Dang. Harry Styles. That's my. Oh uh, yes, he. Was, I didn't I like see. I didn't Styles. see any pictures of him. So maybe he wasn't. Maybe he wasn't there. He dressed a little weird, but I liked Harry Styles. Yeah, you know. He has a unique style. Mm. Good. Good music. Good music. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Well, I think that's about wraps us up for today. This is this has been fun. This has been if, amazing. If you have enjoyed this. <clears throat> this episode, I want you to go ahead and put down below what your favorite part of this conversation was. Um, we definitely loved having you on, Coach Amber J. Uh, thank, thank you for coming to the Willis House. Um, and hopefully we'll have you back soon because this was really, really fun. Uh, maybe you can, you know, I don't know, teach us all to walk in heels better. I don't know. Cause, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got we got some work to do out there, but this was this was so fun. Again, um, tell everybody where we can find you. Well, thank you. I have definitely enjoyed myself. I'll definitely be back if I get an invite. Um, but you can, again, find me at CoachAmberJ.com, Facebook, Instagram, and on my website. So, All right. Uh, before we go, your real estate minute of the day. This is going to be real easy. I want you to save. I want you to save your money. It, it is going to cost you to purchase a home. It's time to get disciplined. And it's time to start saving if you want to become a homeowner. That's it. That's your real estate minute of the day. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us. We will see you next week. See you Bye-bye. next week. Bye.